Let's Plays were one of the most popular genres of YouTube entertainment back in the early 2010s. It seemed then that every other person was filming themselves playing video games in the hopes that they would make it in the big leagues. Many came and many went, and gaming nowadays wouldn't be the same without them. However, as of now, it just seems as if the Let's Plays have faded in popularity barring certain examples, and those who still do Let's Plays more than often do them differently than when the genre was new. Today, we are going to be taking a look at the past, present, and future of Let's Plays. So what better way to start this video than taking it back to where it all began? Let's Plays trace their roots back to the Something Awful forums, but they didn't truly become a thing until 2007, when a YouTuber by the name of Slowbeef, who some of you may know as the host of Retsu Prey, uploaded a video of him commentating over a game called Immortal. Yes, I know the upload date on this video says 2011, but it was originally uploaded in 2007. This slowly but surely kickstarted the trend that would be known as Let's Plays, filming yourself playing a game while commentating on it. It was a Another new concept. Of course, gaming videos have existed since the birth of YouTube, but this was a whole new thing at the time. Slowly but surely, more and more users decided to jump on this bandwagon. Nowadays, Let's Plays from this era are the equivalent of music from the 1950s. Pretty outdated by today's standards, but charming thanks in no part due to its outdated feel. However, we've only really scratched the surface of YouTube Let's Plays, as the man who started it all would inevitably regret the monster that he created. Whenever you create a fresh new formula, there will always be imitators, oftentimes done by people who don't know what the fuck they are doing. After Slowbeef practically invented YouTube Let's Plays, the imitators started rolling out of the woodworks, and the results were pretty pathetic even for the time they came out in. People started pumping out poorly recorded videos made with cheap camcorders pointed at the TV screen, or to put it into other words, the camcorder LP. If it wasn't that, it was unregistered hypercam. Choppy frame rates, bad commentary, and horrible gameplay. A monster was spawned, much to the dismay of the founder of the genre. What ensued was nothing short of a YouTube legend. Retsu Prey. Slow Beef, teaming up with a fellow LPer by the name of Diabetes, spawned their legendary Let's Play riffing series, mocking the ever-loving shit out of the worst Let's Plays YouTube had to offer back then. To put it simply, even to this day, their older videos are still some of the funniest videos on YouTube. Has so we can play about the blocky humans with the five-sided toilet, that's fine? In Tomb Raider 3, create a storyline in which Lara gets breast cancer. <laughs> Imagine the drama of a vulnerable Lara Croft still persisting in her worldly adventures despite her illness. It needs fleshing out, no pun intended, but we guarantee the gaming world would be shocked, stunned, and moved at the effort to make Lara's character more meaningful. They have since moved on from Let's Plays in the past four or so years, and I can't blame them for reasons I'll get to later on in the video. With the late 2000s coming to a close and the 2010s on the horizon, Let's Plays were in for a radical change, and we would see the rise of what would become the biggest YouTuber in the world. The early 2010s marked some radical changes for content on YouTube. Videos were no longer a hobby, becoming a full-blown job for many. People became a lot more serious with their content, throwing out crappy Windows Movie Maker in favor of far better editing software. In other words, YouTube changed, for better or for worse. Let's Plays were no exception, as this period would see their peak in popularity, alongside a significant change in style. Camcorders were no longer pointed at the TV screen, but at the player instead. It became less about the game, and more about the character playing it. A loud and larger-than-life personality for a young audience to attach themselves to. This is where we would see the rise of a YouTuber known as PewDiePie, who is a household name. There probably isn't a single person who doesn't know PewDiePie. He's that famous. He's responsible for where we are today, 
the scare cam let's play, where the focus was on how loud and obnoxious you could be while playing crappy horror games, rather than the games themselves. Truth be told, when I first started watching YouTube regularly back in early 2012, I was actually a fan of his, although this did change later on when I came across a video by Retsupre called Adults React to PewDiePie. With his massively successful formula, once again came the imitators of varying quality. Notable examples include Jack, Septicai, and Markiplier, who share a similar larger-than-life personality. Whether I like their videos or not, I can see why they are so successful. Say what you will, but they have personalities that young teenagers can attach themselves to. Something that can't be said of the camcorder LPs of 2008. Let's Plays reached the mountaintop by this point. The only question was how they would further evolve themselves for the future. Only for two YouTube personalities to team up and show them how it's done. Big old penis flopping around its three big feet of pleasure. By 2012, Let's Plays were at the peak of their popularity, as one of the largest genres of YouTube videos at that point. With PewDiePie climbing up the subscriber ladder, everyone was cashing in on the craze, including YouTube channels who otherwise wouldn't have been making gaming videos had it not been for the rise of PewDiePie. The Scarecam LP was a rather fresh concept by now, but its only appeal was with young teenagers, given the screamy nature of them. What Let's Plays needed was a further evolution, something that could be enjoyed by young teens and adults alike. And what better channel to kick off the craze than the Game Grumps? Starring two hit YouTube personalities, John Tron and Ego Raptor, the Game Grumps further evolved the Let's Play craze into an art form, kickstarting a subgenre of LPs I like to call the Couch Let's Play. The focus was not on the game, but rather the experience, much like a multiplayer session with your best friend on Mario Kart 64. That's the reason why they were so beloved. Their videos are reminiscent of a time when people played video games together, in a time where multiplayer gaming mostly consisted of people sitting alone in their room playing Call of Duty while shouting racial slurs. That and they had the personality to boot. The amount of funny moments is through the roof, which is no wonder why there are so many Game Grumps animated videos that have been produced. No other YouTube channel as far as I'm concerned has as many animated tributes as the Game Grumps do. It goes to show you just how dedicated a fanbase Let's Plays can amass. I'd die to have a fanbase that's one one hundredth as dedicated as theirs. I'd also love it if someone made an animated video out of me, but I doubt that will ever happen in the near future. They have gone through changes in lineup and such, but even six years since its debut, their fans are just as dedicated as ever. The Game Grumps change Let's Plays, and arguably for the better, long were the days of 150 part Let's Plays with boring commentary. Let's Plays were now about the experience and the situations, and not about the game. It seemed that the future of Let's Plays were in good hand, but instead what followed was a once-beloved genre falling victim to the evils of YouTube. The mid-2010s to where we are now can arguably be considered a fading point for many YouTube Let's Plays as it seemed the traditional style of Let's Play had mostly died, only to be continued by various underground YouTubers. Let's Play has changed in a way that wasn't for the better in 2014, when we saw the release of a certain horror game, one that would leave a not-so-pleasant wound on the internet that only as of last year has been healed. I'm of course talking about Five Nights at Freddy's, a game that was inescapable back from 2014 to 2016, but as of now, has faded to the point where only 10-year-olds still play it. These Scarecam Let's Plays were everywhere at the time, but as FNAF's relevance faded, so did these Let's Plays, and to an extent, Let's Plays in general. A good example of this is a YouTuber by the name of Riskrim, who gained millions of views with his FNAF videos, but as of now, he's lucky to get even 10k views a video, which goes to show you how much this genre has faded. It has by no means died, but thanks in no part to the aforementioned FNAF Scarecam videos, Let's Plays aren't quite the powerhouse they used to be a few years ago. There are still Let's Players who gain respectable views such as Oni Plays, but Let's Plays in the traditional sense have faded into the underground. 
This is part of the reason I think Retsupre gave up on riffing Let's Plays, mainly because there hardly is a reason to do so given their seeming fall from grace, alongside the fact few people even use the term Let's Play anymore. The golden days of Let's Plays have long since passed, but the biggest question is what the future of Let's Play has to offer, as Let's Plays have generally been replaced by standard game videos. Will Let's Plays die a slow, painful death? Or is an unseen talent around the corner awaiting to revive the genre? Who knows, YouTube is always changing with new fads being born each year. Hopefully the future will bring upon a new Let's Player giant, one who will evolve the Let's Play genre once again, and show what Let's Plays are truly capable of.